Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. I am crazy, mind blown, excited today. The church bought the Kirtland Temple. And get this the signs in heaven and the timing are absolutely perfect. So, the video that just posted today on March 5th, 2024, at 4 45 p.m., I had actually recorded it and finished it the day before on March 4th. I had just marked it marked it to be posted the next day in the evening and this is insane because the signs that I was talking about that I felt excited about the fact that the church bought the temple and guess what it is opening on March 25th 2024 to all of us to the public and that is the day of the Esther Palm Sunday eclipse so Listen to this video and then go back and listen to the video about the women's signs. And there is some amazing stuff in there. Okay, so I cannot wait to talk about this with you guys. Okay, so in the last video, this was slide was on here, but I had no idea that the Kirtland Temple, the church purchased the Kirtland Temple and it's opening on March 25th, 2024. This was absolutely a day that I put up that we were going to watch. So it is the Purim Esther Eclipse. Purim is a celebration of the brave, bold Esther. And on my last video, we talked about how Esther being a woman is tied to the sign of Virgo and a type of the church. So a type of Zion, a type of the woman rising up. The revelation sign is all about the woman getting her wings and rising up in power, the church, the gathering of Israel. And this sign is amazing. All these signs put together are showing that the greatest miracles we've ever seen are beginning. So this is awesome because this eclipse was on Palm Sunday. And okay, I'm just going to be try so hard not to get ahead of myself in this video because there's so many exciting things that I want you guys to understand everything that is in my heart and my mind right now. It is a lot. So we have the Red Cliffs Temple dedication, which is on March 24th. So right about at that same time. So we have the 2024 as the season of Esther. Now I talk about this on my other video and this came to my attention based on everything that I learned that I talked about in my last video, all the signs that were connected to the Red Cliffs Temple and when I went to that open house. And I noticed all these things that point in my mind to this idea of Esther and how important these signs are. So I found this on the channel Supernatural by Design. So check it out because he talks a lot about the season of Esther. And something that I had added here in the middle is we are also going to be watching this date. But you can see right here, this was a big date to watch. And this was March 25th, 2024. So the beginning of these signs, we have all these other dates to look forward to. But on this first one, we have something huge already, which is the opening of the Kirtland Temple to the public and to the members of the church. We bought it. We own it. So if you want to learn more about this, watch my previous video. But the timing of the purchase of the Kirtland Temple fits in perfectly with the Holy Day stacking. This was the first video. This is how I started my channel was this video right here, special timing and unique circumstances. So in April, we did this video before general conference of April, 2023, expecting them to talk about this theme, this theme of Palm Sunday and the Kirtland temple. So the first podcast after starting my channel, it was exactly one year from this week. So this week is my exact one year anniversary of starting my channel, Christian Fire Poppy. And the first video that I did with Jared was we were talking about holiday stacking and how that connects Palm Sunday to Pentecost and to the Kirtland Temple. And the cool thing about the Palm Sunday and Kirtland Temple connection, which we clearly see with the church buying it and opening it on Palm Sunday this year, is that 40 days after the eclipse is Pentecost. So Maybe something amazing will happen on this day too. Remember, we can't get ahead of ourselves or, you know, expect anything specific, but we never know. And it will be that much more exciting if something does happen. So 
we were hoping, so Jared and I had talked about this around this time a year ago, and we were really hoping that this would happen within the year, and it did. So exciting. <laughs> so the thing to understand is that, so if we go back to last April General General Conference, if we look at the beginning of the Hebrew Civil Year, so the Hebrew Civil Year starts on Nisan 1. So Nisan 1 of 2023 was March 22nd, 2023. And so the beginning of the next year is April 8th, 2024. So within this year period, we have the church buying the Kirtland Temple and opening it and on that special date. But it's also pretty cool because this Nissan one, so the end like of that year, that time period, we have the eclipse that goes over the Kirtland Temple area. So the first temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, where Jesus, Moses, Elijah, and Elias appeared and restored sacred keys and the authority of the priesthood power of Jesus Christ on the earth. Man, thinking celestial right now is amazing. All right, so this was the slide that I copied on here from my previous presentation that I gave. And in fact, what I'm going to do right now is rather than just read this to you, I'm going to play just a few clips that I chopped up and spliced together for you to remind you what we were talking about one year ago, right before the general conference, when we were excited about Palm Sunday and the Kirtland Temple and the Holy Day stacking. And like I said, over the phone, Jared and I were saying, wouldn't it be amazing if the church bought the Kirtland Temple. And since that time, Jared has, on Christian Homestead, has done quite a few videos talking about that possibility of that happening. In fact, the latest one he did was about the community of Christ got a new prophetess, and he was wondering if that would create that change, if she would decide to sell it to the church, and she did. So let's watch that clip. So the keys of this dispensation are committed into your hands, and by this you may know that the great and dreadful day of the Lord is near, even at the doors. So it's kind of interesting, General Conference 2020 and 2023 both fall on that Palm Sunday, um, the Passover, and the 10th of Nisan. And then in the 2020 General Conference, there were seven separate speakers that talked about the Kirtland Temple. So that theme definitely showed up. And let's take a look. Um, so we have to take a minute to appreciate the rarity of the stacking because Passover, Palm Sunday, and the 10th of the Nisan and General Conference are actually all four separately determined dates. So to have them stack up in the same weekend is rare, and it might not seem like it just because um, three years afterwards in 2023, they stack up again, but it's actually a pretty wild anomaly. So, you know, I looked from 2010 to 2040 so you can see, these are the only two days of this kind of stacking. So you can see, um, I highlighted in gray where some of the days General Conference lands on Palm Sunday or some of the days the 10th of Nissan um, lands on there. Um, but yeah, and, and that's what I was talking about earlier, how you see on the chart there, you guys, that on it's not going to be until uh, 2031 that we're going to have Palm Sunday during the conference weekend. So it's going to be a while. That's right. That's right. So Palm Sunday, the way that is determined is by counting back seven days from the first Sunday after the full moon that occurs on or after spring equinox. And then Shabbat Haggadol follows the lunar calendar and must be on the Sabbath day before Passover. And then Nisan 10 follows just the lunar calendar alone. So they're all independent. And the general conference is always the first weekend in April of the Gregorian solar calendar. So you can think of it as kind of like four holiday calendar wheels spinning at different rates and directions and to have all four stack up together is significant. And does it mean something? Well, God has used that method in the past for conveying messages about events. So looking from 2010 to 2040, um, you know, that's it's it seems pretty significant. It's very similar to have that same thing. And, you know, it kind of one, it makes you wonder like what, what does it mean? And, you know, we're not sure, I'm not sure, but 
it could be some kind of a parallel time. Maybe it could be highlighting what happens like in the time between the two dates or highlighting what happens right after 2023 general conference. It's like some people will sometimes be like, well, why even pay attention to um, the Jewish feast days? Um, yeah. Well, for one thing, they seem to still be significant today because there have been things specific to our church that have, that have still happened on those days, like when Joseph Smith received the gold plates, when Elijah came to the Kirtland Temple, it was on mm -hmm. uh, First Fruits, it was on Bikarim, it was on yep. Easter. Well, so that's one thing. But the other <laughs> thing is because you have to remember, you guys, that like our church is not entirely complete yet. Like it is. Like we have the restored church, but we have an entire other people, the Jews, that will be joining us once right. uh, Christ comes. And they are still on that calendar, on the, right. the Hebrew right. lunar calendar. And so I think that the Lord does things in a way that makes sense to his children, right? And so when right. you have uh, an overlap, you have both groups that can appreciate the significance uh, of their respective uh, special right. day or, or holy day. Right. And so you and, have and kind of like a coming together, a union. Yes. And so I, I love to find those connections between the restored gospel and the Jews. And mm -hmm. um, because eventually we are all going to come together and see eye to eye on all of the events in history and how it was so beautiful and perfect. And I discover the Hebrew mystery of the Moray and the Malkosh. And this is about two harvest rains that were celebrated. So the early rains were light and softened the hard winter ground. The latter rain was more heavy, even destructive, but necessary for the final harvest. Um, and this is supported by none other than Joel chapter two, of course, which is about the latter day harvest rains pouring out before the final gathering. So sound familiar? It says he has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. So at this point, I'm wondering, yeah, maybe there's going to be another big Pentecostal outpouring before the harvest ends for good of the second coming. And door number five, we have Christ opening the door to temples. So in Moses' day, the glory of the Lord entered into the temple. In Joseph Smith's day, Jesus Christ appeared and stood on the pulpit. And another cool note is that when he appeared in the Kirtland Temple, the first modern day temple, he actually stood on the pulpit. And if you look the, at the pictures behind the pulpit, there's an arch doorway shaped window. Yeah. So you have that behind him as he appears. Um, and then the Nauvoo, the Salt Lake, and many of our temples have arch doorways. Well, I particularly, the Nauvoo Temple is where I was married, and there are three beautiful arch doorways in the front. Um, so door number six, President Nelson said that the year 2020 was a hinge point in history. So maybe it's like we're opening the door of scriptural events right into the Book of Acts. Um, and we look at what happened in the Book of Acts. There was turmoil, oppression, chaos, confusion. But there was also Pentecost, miracles, outpourings, and conversions. And you know, you can only imagine what the significance of this conference might be, right. or what right. might be said, introduced, yeah. whatever. Yeah, so. yeah, it'll be it'll be pretty interesting. And and it really was fascinating how COVID was peaking at the same time. So you had like those things happening, and just all that language too of Malachi about um, you know Christ being at the doors. We know it's the great and the dreadful day. So it's this real polarization, these, the, the day of extremes, right? And, um, you know, I mentioned in my other video, I, I had, you know, for years before, um, you know, on my blog and, and on my YouTube channel, I'm also going to be talking about preparedness. I think it's a fine balance. I think there's a balance that we need to be aware and look those hard things in the eye, recognize, I think it's okay to say those things are coming. I need to be physically prepared, but to also prioritize your faith and courage and to not get scared by it and you only you every individual can just kind of like judge how how to juggle that but um that's why i've always felt like preparedness was big because for years i've just always had the impression that um 2020 and then the 2024 2025 range those to me have always been like this so it's kind of interesting now that i put this all together that it kind of supports just this 
feeling that I've had since, you know, years ago, like a long time ago, that this period of time was the reason to be prepared, to be physically prepared and temporally prepared. And the church is certainly um, all about that as well. So, yeah. So if you can buy some chickens, uh, yes, <laughs> not only will you get fresh <laughs> eggs, which, which is great, but it's very rewarding just having chick. I love chickens. Well, you'll uh, have to tell me all about it. Cause I plan to get some chickens this spring. I've never done that. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do want to do it. So. So I actually did get chickens. <laughs> And they actually just started laying eggs this week. It took me a while to get them. I got them, I think it was August or September. And they are finally big enough to start laying eggs. So we are getting fresh eggs for breakfast. My kids are loving it. They have these little aprons that they wear with pockets and they collect them. And they think of them like Easter eggs. So it is adorable. So we are getting more prepared because the signs of the last days are screaming in our ears at this point. There are so many things. And I feel like on my channel, I'm only able to share a small portion because some of these things are hard to express unless you understand the whole. But anyway, it it's hard to convey at times, but I hope you guys are understanding how these things are connecting and what it might mean. It means a lot to me. And it's definitely confirming some of the theories that I have. And some of that is that we are going to see some of the greatest miracles, like President Nelson is saying. And it really supports this thought of another Pentecost. And I feel like we are already starting to see these miracles happen. But I really think this is just going to accelerate and fast. This is so exciting. So remember President Nelson, he said that, in the coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. So the greatest miracles are coming. That latter rain and God is working right now to bind us for a sign upon your hand and frontlets between your eyes. So he's sealing us in our foreheads and in our hands to listen to him, to hear him, to follow the spirit. And just like in my previous video where it opened with a picture of Emma Smith to spend our time learning and listening to the spirit and to set aside the things of the world. All right. So I feel like now that it's been a year, I have more clarity as to what this, these two pillars in time mean. So right here in 2020, we had the big worldwide Palm Sunday Hosanna shout. So it was on Palm Sunday and Palm Sunday, when you shout Hosanna, that's what they shouted as Christ walked through the Shushan golden gate door and he came into the city and they held him as a king as he rode on the donkey. And so for the entire church to do that was such a Palm Sunday event. And this really confirms to me that Holy Week, our prophet is wanting us to understand Holy Week because it is a type for the events that are going to happen in the last days. So the law of Moses and those commandments are to typify all things to the end of the earth. So right here, this second pillar in time, one of the possibilities I was thinking at the time that something would happen after this general conference. So between last April and the upcoming general conference, something big did happen. The Kirtland temple opening again and that happening the day after Palm Sunday. All right, so this is pretty interesting. It kind of makes me wonder. Now, I talked about this in my last video. This is a slide from my previous video. So I wondered that with this Palm Sunday Hosanna shout, so we talked about here, this big Palm Sunday Hosanna shout, and what, so right after that, what comes next would be the cleansing of the temple. So you see here, President Nelson, he talked about Easter and how it's important to study the Savior's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then his cleansing of the temple, his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, his crucifixion, his glorious resurrection, and his subsequent appearances. So kind of see this as we're going to go through a Palm Sunday period of time, and then we're going to go through a cleansing of the temple period of time, and then we're going to go through the time of the trials. So 
I wonder how long this Palm Sunday time will last. I wonder if those two pillars of time mark the end of it. Um, it seems like that could be the case, that we're heading into the cleansing of the temple times. And we have the red heifers that are in ready, and that is uh, kind of what the Jews do to purify and to get ready for um, the Day of Atonement. So just a fun little note, something really amazing today. My sister-in-law, Lisa, had her baby, Emma. So she named her baby Emma a long time ago, not knowing that her baby would be born at the same time that they announced the purchase of the Kirtland Temple, along with the Smith ha family homestead, the mansion house, the red brick store, and they even bought seven letters written between Joseph Smith and Emma Smith. So I was so happy for her and her baby's name, Emma Rose. My daughters actually between their first and last names actually have the names Emma and Rose as well. So we have that special connection. My sister-in-law, who I love very much, and she's actually thinking of possibly starting a channel soon. And she is about to finish a book that she wrote. And I believe that she is going to be Anyways, putting that out here soon. So I'll give you more information when that time comes. But I thought that was really cool. Look, she looks a little bit like Emma Smith. So little Emma being born on a very special day. What a treasure. So this slide, again, this slide from my last video has a lot of meaning because I had put on here this picture of the Relief Society Red Brick Store and we own it now. The church owns it now. So I was talking about how women in the scripture, so women are a type of the church, of us, of Zion. And now is the time the church is rising. We are at the end of the seven years of getting our wings. We're ready to rise up and to be more successful at gathering Israel. So link to birth, blood, love, and purity Zion. So we have all this great imagery and the Red Cliffs Temple. So the reason I got focused on this idea of looking at the signs happening around Purim, and the reason I found the Purim Eclipse, the Purim and Palm Sunday Eclipse, was because the Red Cliffs Temple is being dedicated at that exact same time. So on March 24th of this year, the Red Cliffs Temple will be dedicated, and then the following day, the, um, the Kirtland Temple will open. So it's pretty cool because this temple is located near Zion National Park and the Virgin River. So you have the idea of Virgo, Virgin, the church, Esther, and Zion. And this temple has is like the sister temple to the St. George Temple. And the St. George Temple was the first temple built after the Nauvoo Temple. And they built it to look in that same manner. It looks a little bit like the Nauvoo Temple. And so that's pretty cool, this connection here. And now we have all these new Nauvoo um, purchases. And I was married in the Nauvoo Temple. I have a lot rich pioneer history connected to the Nauvoo Temple. Um, my ancestors were the knights. And anyways, I actually have a lot of ancestors that were really key in the restoration of the gospel and were close friends of Joseph Smith. So this is very, very exciting. And I know that my ancestors are probably really excited about these changes and these temples that we're going to be dedicating. So, man, I, <laughs> when I was at the Radcliffe Temple, I, as I was learning all these things, I was having all these epiphanies and my, the spirit was really just pointing out to me this time period of March 24th to 25th, the Esther Purim Palm Sunday Eclipse, and how awesome that I get to see and live in the day that the Kirtland Temple is going to open up once again. And I'm so excited about this because I know it has an even greater, deeper symbolic meaning for what we are going to see happening in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in these last days. And Zion is rising up. And I love talking to you guys about this because we are all coming together to make it's up to us individually and collectively to come together and to create this beautiful zion and so how awesome that the red cliffs utah temple was they have a custom pattern blend and it's designed after both the succulent and the poppy together and it has kind of this red tinted color so 
the fire poppy temple. Really, really awesome. All right. And then you can see here, this is on my, this is a slide from my previous video. So I just threw it up here because there are also some really cool things that we're thinking about the woman as being indicative of the church. We have this dedication is seven days after we have a World Relief Society birthday devotional broadcast. I bet they are going to be talking about all of these exciting pieces of property that we've obtained and probably the history of the Red Brick Relief Society house, things like that. That will be awesome. And then, of course, we've talked a lot about this. March 24th, Palm Sunday Purim. It's a penumbral lunar eclipse. So what a penumbral lunar eclipse will look like to the eye is it's actually very slight. When you look up the moon, it will look slightly more dim. Fun fact, the temple was named by Sister Holland before she passed away. And it was really cool because I noticed that I was here at the temple. So I love this picture that I took because the sun bursting through, it really just symbolized all the epiphanies that I had while I was here. And it really stuck out to me when I realized that it was just a big coincidence. I had no idea until the day of that I was at this open house on Minor Purim. It's called Minor or Little Purim. And it's basically the month before actual Purim when this temple will be dedicated. And it's also cool because this is the last temple dedication before the April 8th, 2024 eclipse that's connected to these Easter, Palm Sunday, and Esther signs. All right, so the really awesome thing is since something happened on this day, we have all kinds of signs pointing to more exciting things happening and other dates to watch. And one of those is uh, Pentecost which is linked to the wheat harvest. So this is kind of the new logo that the Really Saturday has been putting up on their new Facebook and Instagrams. And it was at Pentecost that the Holy Spirit descended and they were at prayer on the Jewish feast, which had a double significance to Israel. It was the time of the spring wheat harvest and it also marked the day that the Lord gave the Torah to the entire people. So this is 40 days. Pentecost is 40 days after the eclipse. And we know that you know, in Jonah, he cried, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. But another day that is linked to this is also the Day of Atonement, because tech, or usually the Jews read the story of Jonah on the Day of Atonement. And there are a whole lot of signs on the Day of Atonement this year on October 11th as well. So I'm just going to go over this briefly because you should really go back and watch my previous video that is about women right before this video. And basically what I talk about is that we see this comet that's coming through. It's really interesting because it's coming from the east. So Joseph Smith said, they will say it is a planet, a comet, but the son of man will come as the sign of the coming of the son of man, which will be as the light of the morning cometh out of the east. So here we have a comet and it's coming out of the east and on the day of atonement it's right in the birthing spot of the woman and it ends in the eagle with wings because we know that the woman the revelation 12 scripture tells us that the women or the church will be given wings and I've been talking about this the entire year, how I believe that these last seven years since 2017 have been the time of the church getting its higher and holier wings. These higher and holier changes are more than just procedural changes. They are prophetic changes. Our prophet is inspired. These changes are from God and it is helping the church to rise up in its full glory, clothed in the sun, the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. So exciting things. And something kind of cool, I almost forgot to mention this new comet arriving in 2024. It could be even brighter than Venus. So they don't know exactly how bright it will be, but it might be really stunning to see. So join the goal. We're working on finishing reading the Book of Mormon by April 8th, 2024, or Read the Book of Mormon every day up through April 8th, 2024. Remember, to not only be hearers, but be doers. Thank you so much. 
Let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like a true fire poppy. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after world chaos fires. Join us, join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.